I say, if you really love me, help me. Help me, please. I don't know what is going on. And that day, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I surrendered myself. Welcome back. I'm Brian, and this is Faith on Fire. And in just a minute, you're about to see a powerful testimony from Nikki Cruz. And the reason I'm sharing it is because I already put the sermon from Anne Graham Lotz, who's the daughter of Billy Graham, from the return 2020 on the National Mall this past weekend. And if you haven't seen it, it's only seven minutes. Her sermon is incredibly powerful and awesome, which is why I shared it. Now, in it, she mentions this testimony of Nikki Cruz. And so I wanted to share that as well. So here it is. Nikki Cruz, if you don't know, is the gang member featured in The Cross and the Switchblade uh, telling the story, the true story, of how Pastor David Wilkerson in New York City ministered to these uh, inner city gang members, in particular this one gang leader, Nikki Cruz, and led him to Jesus Christ. Uh, in the movie, which, by the way, is free on uh, YouTube, I will put a link to it in the video description, uh, it's a 1970 movie uh, before Erica Estrada was a household name and famous from being on that uh, TV show Chips. If you remember that, I remember growing up watching Chips. It was one of my favorite shows when I was a little kid. Uh, but this is before anyone knew who Erica Estrada was. But everyone knew who Pat Boone was. And Pat Boone uh, plays Pastor David Wilkerson. And he is there and he introduces Nikki Cruz. And then Nikki Cruz gives his testimony uh, and sermon. It's very powerful. So without further ado, here it is. This uh, is quite a moment for the two of us because we're just talking about how long ago we made that movie and, and how uh, exciting it was to be literally in the streets of Harlem and Brooklyn, Fort Greene, the Bronx, where that story took place and reenacting it and uh, I remember when we were, uh, I got in a cab from downtown Manhattan to come up to the site where we were gonna be shooting our main scenes together. And, uh, and so the cabbie said, what are you going up to Harlem for? I said, we're making a movie in the streets. He says, you gotta be crazy. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull up to the sidewalk and let you out. You pay me before we get there, I'm gone. That's how dangerous it was while we were actually reliving the life of Dave Wilkerson and, uh, and uh, you. <laughs> and, and as Eric Estrada was playing you. And <laughs> how, how many times you got yeah. slapped on your face? Well, well, you know, when he, he, had to, he had to say that about cutting me up as Dave Wilkerson. And I said, if you can do it, but you can cut me into a hundred pieces and every piece will be saying, God loves you. And he slapped me as you apparently had slapped Wilkerson. Yes. And I didn't know it, but Dave Wilkerson was standing in the back as, as we were filming this. Well, Nikki, I mean, Eric Estrada had never acted before. And he kept slapping me hard. <laughs> that in, was the first time. In the rehearsals and then in the real thing, and my teeth were getting loose. And, uh, and, I, and the director, Don Murray, said, hey, ease up, ease up until we're actually shooting the scene. But I survived. And, and Nikki, uh, you and I, you were, you were the garbage can killer. That's what they called you. You were actually, you were deep into demonic activity, weren't you? That's correct. And I want to hear from you. We're gonna, I'm going to step aside and let you talk in a minute. But we were both so privileged. To, uh, to be part of that movie, and, and they've just been telling us backstage, well, you told me how many millions of people. Uh, uh, two, uh, two million, five hundred thousand. More than that, I think it's more like 200 million. Two, 200, I'm 200 sorry. 200 million, yes. Sounds like Joe Biden. No, I'm concerned. I'm cons <laughs> In reverse. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, but yes, God used the two of us. And, and listen, I want to tell you before he speaks that I consider him a Puerto Rican Apostle Paul. This man has reached so many people, literally by the hundreds of thousands in person, 
coming from a very poor background. And then after he met Jesus, well, I'll let him tell you, but I, I so admire and love this man, and I'm happy to hand the mic to the real Nikki Cruz. Thank you, Pat. God bless you. It's good to be here. I just want to go ahead straight to, to my life. I was born in Puerto Rico, raised in New York City, educated in California, and confused in Colorado Spring, Colorado. But one thing I, I have to say, that God has been so good to me and to my family, my wife, my daughters, my grandchildren. They have come from a curse into the highest majestic presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I was born in Puerto Rico, I didn't know nothing. The only thing I knew was the abuse. Many times, why did my mother went after my, my life? Kick me, and many times I was breathing so heavily from my nose, split my lips, kick me in my stomach until I fall unconscious on the floor, drag me to this room, it was dark, and there I was breathing so bad that I, that I didn't have no energy. And every time that I called my mother to give me a glass of water or give me some food, I heard her say, you a son of the devil. My mother was very deeply involved in black magic. My father was a satanic priest. And here was the environment. I wasn't the only one who was in the family. By the way, you're going to get surprised. I have 17 brothers and one sister. So my father really got it. He really got lots of love. But today, as I'm standing here, I began to flash back and say, this is something that is hard to explain. The thing that happened to me, it was that my mother beat me so much that I tried to commit suicide and hanging when I was nine years old, right there in a mango tree. And from there, things began to change. My mother told me right in my face and beat me up and told me, you are not my son. Get out of my face. I never want to see you again. You are a failure. You are son of Satan. I curse the day that I brought you into this world. This is my mother talking. This is my mother cursing me. And then that did it. That completely damaged me mentally, emotionally, physically. That the only alternative that I have it was to kill myself. What the heck I'm doing in this world? If this is, it's better to be dead that to be abused, it's better to know that, that there's nothing. I'm a failure. I'm, I'm no good for nothing. When you hear those words, that hurt. That hurt. And my life from there, I die. I died when I was nine years old. And I was waiting to be buried when I was 19 or 20 years old, right? in a lonely street in Brooklyn, New York. And through all of these things, all what I did, I did a lot of things wrong. My hand was full of blood. I saw people die. I saw my best friend die on, on, right in my arms. And there, no more, no more money. Gone, history. And I knew that he was 17 years old. And I was hugging him. He was already dead. 32 staff on his chest. And I had to see this. And then after that, I was going wild in the street. New York City was like a jungle. 
in the jungle, there's so much thing that happen. An animal don't know the difference between right and wrong. The animal has to kill another animal so he can survive. So that was happened to me. Yes, my hand was full of blood. Yes, I received a lot of joy in hurting people because I was possessed with, with this anger and bitterness, torn apart. And here I was in and now of yell. And yes, the last time there is, because when I was in the last time in jail, I was put in, in this cell away from all, all the other people. And then from there, I began to feel a lot of things. My mind, I smoked my mind, and I began to talk to myself, just smoking a cigarette. As I smoked my mind, they already say, if you a man, why you behave like an animal? If you were an animal, how in the world you behave like a human being? There was no answer. But I remember when I was released. I remember when I was dealing with a psychiatrist for six months. And then Dr. Goodman told me, Nikki, there's a dark side in you that nobody can penetrate. You are walking straight to jail on the electric chair, Nikki. You are dead. And then it's happened. Out of the blue sky, this man came in with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know, you're expecting to see Hercule. You're expecting to see somebody strong. No, it was a hillbilly, a hick. This guy, this, he, he, the suit that he had, he got a black suit. White shirt, tiny, tiny tie. And then he was so skinny, skinny, skinny like a spaghetti. That was the man that God brought into my life. I hear this man some way, somehow penetrate the war son. And there he came to be abused, to be misused, to be cursed, to be in a way that we stole everything that he had, walking in the street without no shoes. He didn't give up, like many people give up. He was still there. And yet I went to heal this man, but I didn't went by myself. I took 75 guys for protection. <laughs> and we, dis we was going wild. And there's another 12 gangs, Wilkerson were naive. He invited 12 different gangs, enemy. And we was known by one of the worst gangs in New York City. We fought all, all the, the gangs and not only that, but we declared war against the police because there was a boy that was killed. But you know when you're a criminal, you cannot escape, you got to lie. You become a good liar, and I became a good liar. And then I, I, I tried to, to say to myself, I'm a good man. No, I wasn't a good man at all. But then this guy, David Wilkerson, came in. I was with my girlfriend about three blocks down, and I heard this voice, a loud voice. And then I told my girl, come on, let's go. Because we used to have signals, you know, when I said, you come, you come, you understand? And all of these things that you do. And then my girl didn't want to come. So I told her, when I said, you come, you come, do you understand? And then I don't have to say anything else. We start running together. There was about 300 people there. I heard this guy say, God had the power to change your life right now. And then when I heard that, I said, you shut up. There's no God. We are the people. We got the power. And nobody can come and penetrate us. So get out of this neighborhood. Then I started pushing the people. I want to see this guy. I want to see it. Then I just went and I pushed the people face to face with David. And I said, you, you, 
You skinny. What you doing here? Then I slap him. I spit at him. I curse him with every X word that you can find in the in the dirty vocabulary. And then let me say this. Then Wilkerson froze. When he froze, you can tell because I was a streetwise. This guy, he can talk. Then just like that, he opened his mouth and he said, I came over here, Nikki, to bring you a message from heaven. Nikki, Jesus loves you. And I just look at him and say, what's the matter with this guy? Then not only that, I push him and here he starts screaming at me. Kill me. Is that going to make you feel good? Kill me in front of these people. I know you can do it. Do it. And, th and I say, wow. Whoa. This guy is a, a spooky. He's a stranger. Nobody told me to kill him. So he said, you go ahead. You can kill me in thousand pieces. And you can throw those pieces right there on the, on the street. But remember, Nikki, every little piece is going, going to cry out, Jesus love you, Nikki. And that was the thing that really changed the atmosphere. He got through my head. Do you know that? Everything, Jesus love you, Jesus love you, Jesus love you. For two weeks, Jesus love you, Jesus love you. I was sleeping here with my girl, Jesus love you, Jesus love you, walking the street, committing all kinds of hold up, Jesus love you, Jesus love you, fighting with the other gangs, and you go all the way out, and there's no guarantee that you're gonna come out, what you call a rumble. And then, I went to heal the preacher. And ladies and gentlemen, what a surprise. We walk in, there were 2,000 people there, 12 different gangs, and here I walk in, we interrupt the whole service. This poor girl tried to sing a song. She was beautiful, and we say, here, baby, here, here, you can smoke this, and you can smoke this, and you can sing better. And then the poor girl didn't know what to do. She dropped the microphone, Wilkerson grabbed the microphone, and then, just like that, he started crying and crying. I said, what's that guy doing, crying? Like a girl? You're not supposed to cry in front of people. But who knows the compassion inside of a, in a woman or a man? Well, let me tell you, that night, something beautiful happened. I wasn't expected. Then it seemed that the other gangs wanted to fight us. We were ready for the fight. And some way, somehow, God intervened. He helped David Wilkerson. And right there, he just said that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he died for you. And it takes a lot of heart for anybody to give your life to Christ. And then I was thinking, wow, I never heard about Jesus Christ at all. And perhaps some of you, 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 you might be questioned if God is for real, or this is happened or not happened. But that night, that night, I, I went and I remember very clear that when I went, I wasn't expecting this. My knees were shaking. There's something there. And like a rush wind came in. And that night, I wasn't expecting this. I fall on my knees. Nobody put me down. I went on my, my knees by myself. And I tell you this, I wasn't expecting that. Then I began to flash back. This is impossible. This is hate. I don't believe in this. What I'm doing. 
And I saw my friend Israel crying, and I said, what are you doing crying? And then I was the one that just began to feel something tight my heart. I could not breathe. I went to my knees, and right there, there is Jesus Christ came into my heart. Jesus Christ totally changed me. That night, he showed me his love. He died for me, and I didn't know who Jesus Christ was, but you can never walk out from the presence of the Lord. You can never be that tough, because he handled every tough circumstances, every situation, and I went and I say, I don't know how to love. I don't know, I'm full of hate. Help me, Jesus, for the first time. And I started screaming in front of my girlfriend and the other guys that came with me to give their heart to Jesus. And I just crying and crying. And there is, I say, if you really love me, help me. Help me, please. I don't know what is going on. And that day, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. I surrendered myself. I repent for my sin and ask him to forgive me. And he did it. And you think, wow, yes, he did it. Because I changed my weapon for the Bible. And that day that I took my Bible, I never went back. I'm looking forward for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to bring that person to Jesus Christ. And he's going to do it. I'm going to leave you with this. I have been all over the world. I have spoke to millions of people. This guy with a, with, can you tell that I, got, that I have an accent? What are you laughing at? A sexy, sexy accent. I gave my life to Christ. And you know what Christ did? That he broke that curse of witchcraft completely. My mother gave her heart to Jesus Christ. She's in heaven with Jesus. My father gave his heart to Jesus. Cursed the darkness and received the light. 13 of my brothers gave their heart to Jesus. Three became minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm standing here knowing where I'm going, knowing what Christ has done. There's no way I've got one way to go, one ticket, not two ways, one ticket. And now I want to do something. If Jesus changed Nicky Cruz, he can change you too. And I want you to know, right now, I cannot see you, the last of people here. But so what? Some of you, you need Jesus. You need forgiveness. You need to forgive yourself for all the things that you have done. And you need help. And Jesus Christ can help you. He can heal your heart. He can kiss your pains away like he did to me. He will come if you call him right now. I don't see you, but in this moment, if you have been touched, I'm just saying, God, if you, if you touch Nikki, please help me. Touch me. I need help. I want you to raise your hands, whatever you are, regardless if I don't see you. And some of the sister or brother will put their arms around you with love. And you release yourself totally to Jesus Christ. Take the Bible in your hands and believe that Jesus can do it. Okay? 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 Jesus Christ, every time to all the things that we're going to fears and everything, run to the cross. Run to Jesus. He's going to receive you with open arms. 
and he will kiss your pain and help you with your fear. Can you do that? Let me say this prayer for you. Sweet Jesus of the Bible, oh, you are so beautiful. You had the power to change life. You got it. That is the mystery. That you are the Savior that came from heaven for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall never perish or have everlasting life. Thank you for the power of the word and thank you for what you have done. Touch everyone here, the family, the drug addicts that are hurting so bad. Family right now, they don't know what to do. Let me tell you, there's a one way that you can go. Go, run into the arm of Jesus Christ and surrender. Enough is enough. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. En español, perdóname, Señor Jesús. Perdóname. Help me. Ayúdame. I need you. Te necesito. Ven. Entra en mi corazón. Come. Enter into my heart. And take it into your hands. And kiss my heart with so much bitterness and hate. I surrender right now. I surrender. Raise your hands and say, I surrender right now. God is for real. I am for real. Pat Boone is for real. Everyone here is for real. And because Jesus Christ has changed you and changed me. And those who know, don't know Jesus Christ, come and he will help you. It is my prayer. God bless you. Take care. I don't see you, but I can feel you, okay? God bless you.